In isosceles trapezoid ABCD, parallel bases A, B, and C, D have lengths 500 and 650 respectively, and A, D equals B, C equals 333. The angle bisectors of angle A and angle D meet at P, and the angle bisectors of angle B and angle C meet at Q. Find PQ. Okay, so uh, what, what, what do we have in this problem? That's the first thing we should always look for. It's an isosceles trapezoid, A, B, C, D. So I'm gonna label my vertices A, B, C, and D such that A, B is 500, C, D is 650, and A, D equals B, C is 333. What else do you have? You have your angle bisectors of angle A and angle D meeting up at a point P. I'm gonna label them like this, um, point P. Um, and you have these two angle bisectors, angle bisector of angle B and angle C meeting up at point Q. And actually not only do you have that, um, have these angle bisectors, angle ADP and angle CDP are equal because DP is the angle bisector. Um, you also have that these four angles are equal to each other. Um, I'm calling them, I'm calling all of them X. And the reason is because this is an isosceles trapezoid. So the two base angles are equal to each other just by properties of isosceles trapezoids. So um, if you split both of them in half, you're going to get four smaller angles that are all equal to each other. And similarly, you can call this angle Y, this angle Y, this angle Y, and this angle Y. You want to find this length, PQ. And, okay. The, what's the first thing I'm going to do? It's I'm going to claim that P and Q are the same height from the base. And it might not look like that on the diagram, but that's just because uh, the diagram is not perfect. I'm going to claim that the distance from P to CD and from Q to CD is equal. So I'm going to claim that this side length is equal to that length. And you can draw two right angles here. So I'm going to drop the altitudes from P and Q, and I'm going to claim that these two both have the same length. And why is that? It's just because, well, imagine you, you, you slice this trapezoid in half, right down the middle. Um, just, look, just taking a look at this left side, everything over here, um, I mean, and I mean this angle, this angle, the length 333. If you reflect it over to this side, just take a reflection across this line. It's gonna, everything's gonna map, on this side is gonna map to this side. So for example, D is gonna go right to C, A is gonna go right to B, and these angle bisectors are gonna go right to each other. So you can see that kind of P and Q would actually also go to each other, like P and Q are symmetric with respect to this line. So, Really what you have is you have a point P on the left and a point Q on the right, and they're basically the same as each other, except one of them's on the left, one of them's on the right. And what that's gonna mean is by a symmetry argument, this length is equal to that length. And because, because of that, if you, you have these two right angles, you have these two equal sides, means that this quadrilateral I've drawn is a rectangle. So this angle's right, that angle's right. Furthermore, PQ is equal to this length between these two vertices. Um, and why don't I actually give these two vertices names? I'm gonna call this point S and this point R. And PQ is equal to SR. And remember CD was 650. What's the next thing you do? Okay, so the next thing you do is you realize that, hey, okay, you must have this angle's a right angle. And why, why do I say that this angle's a right angle? The reason is because Take a look at this angle and that angle that I've just highlighted. This angle is equal to 2x and this angle is equal to 2y. And we know from properties of quadrilaterals that the sum of this angle plus the sum of this angle is 180. The sum of the two base angle, two different base angles is 180. So 2x plus 2y is 180, meaning x plus y is equal to 90. And what's this angle? This angle, um, well, if, if you take a look at this triangle over here, which I'm gonna highlight in blue, this triangle over here has angles X, Y, and whatever this angle is. 
But since x plus y is equal to 90, this angle must also be 90 so that the sum of these three angles can be 180. So this is a right angle. And what else do we know? We know that this angle is a right angle as well. So because this is angles x, this is a right angle. This angle is also y. And that's, that's really cool um, because now you've got, you've kind of got what, well, what do you have, but, um, angle APX is 90 degrees angle PAD is nine is Y. Um, similarly angle PSD is 90 degrees and angle SPD is Y. So you must have that by angle angle similarity that triangle APD is similar to triangle D, um, no, P, S, D. You have to remember the order of the, the vertices when writing similar triangles out. You have a triangle APD is similar to triangle P, S, D. And why is that helpful? It is helpful because we are going to use similar triangles and a little bit of trigonometry to find what this length ds is. And ultimately, if we find ds, because by symmetry, ds is equal to cr, we can find rs by subtracting both of those from 650. So what, we do, what we're going to do is we're going to operate on this left side, and we're going to find this length ds from by using this, um, but by, by kind of essentially using this x, y, 90 triangle. So the first thing we do is we drop an altitude from A to side CD. And I'm going to do it in blue. I, I can also draw an altitude from B to, to CD. And what you see is that um, because of this, because this, because this is an isosceles trapezoid, you must have this length is equal to this length. Furthermore, since you dropped altitudes from A and B to CD, you must have um, this length, which I'll do in a lighter blue, this length is equal to 500, this length. So this length was 500. These two lengths were both equal to each other and the sum of all three of those is 650, which means that you must have that this length is 75 and this length is 75. So that's our first step to um, solve, solving this, um, so solving a problem like this. Um, let's see if I can get rid of these scribbles. No, I can't, so I'm just gonna leave them there. So the next thing you do is you realize that, hey, you have two sides of a triangle, a right triangle to be exact. Um, well, and I call this foot of the altitude T. Then you look at triangle ADT, you must have that um, cosine of this angle is 75 over 333. Remember Sokotoa. So cosine of this angle, which was equal to 2x, is equal to adjacent 75 over hypotenuse AD, which is 333. And if you want to simplify that, that's 25 over 111. How does that help us? Because now that we have cosine of 2x, you can actually find the sine of x and you can find the cosine of x. And the reason is because remember the double angle formula for cosine, you must have that cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1 is equal to cosine of 2x. This is equal to 225 over 111. Why don't, why don't we solve for cosine of x? cosine squared of x to be exact. Cosine squared of x is equal to, if you, if you do the arithmetic, 68 over 111 by adding one to both sides and then dividing both sides by two. So cosine squared of x is 68 over 111. And what does that mean? It means that you can now find a DP because um, re remember, if you, if you take a look at this triangle, I'll highlight this triangle in green, triangle PAD. Um, excuse me, um, triangle PAD, you have the cosine of angle X, this angle over here 
adjacent over hypotenuse AD. So would be, um, well, um, so cosine of X is equal to the square root of that. So square root of 68 over 111. This is equal to PD over AD. AD was 333. And what does that tell us? It tells us that PD is 333 um, root 68 over 111. If you want to simplify this down, you're going to get um, 3 root 68 times 111. If you just want to rationalize that denominator, get that one 111 outside of the square root, dividing by 111 outside the square root. You get PD is equal to 3 root 68 times 111. Um, and we can do the same thing with triangle PSD to find side length SD. So I'm going to highlight this triangle in light blue, this triangle. Um, you have that cosine of X, cosine of this angle, is equal to is equal to um, ds over P, dp, and if you recall, dp was three root sixty eight times one eleven, um, but remember cosine of x is equal to square root of sixty eight over one eleven, therefore. DS, if you solve for this, you're going to get 3 root 68 times 111 um, times 68 over 111. This cancels out with that. You're left with DS is equal to 3 root 68 squared, which is 3 times 68, which is 204. So DS is 204. And what does that mean? It means CR is also 204 because CR and DS were equal to each other by symmetry. So let, let me just mark that down. DS and CR are both 204. And from that, we can find RS. And remember, RS was equal to PQ. So if we find RS, we're just done. We must have RS is equal to CD 650 minus 204 minus 204, which is equal to 242. So that is our final answer. PQ and RS are both equal to 242. So we are done. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.